All right. This is our first actual lecture today. And it's going to cover the branches of philosophy. Now, philosophy is a wide scope. And there are a variety of areas that philosophical inquiry can touch. And in particular, philosophy is often seen as kind of the first major study. For instance, whenever one receives a PhD in a particular field, one is receiving a doctorate in philosophy of whatever that field is. For instance, a computer scientist, which it seems that computer science and philosophy may be very, very far apart, right? But one receives a doctorate in philosophy of computer science, which pays homage and it pays um, respect to the depth and the power the philosophical inquiry has. And so today, what we're going to do is we're going to examine some of the branches of philosophy, in particular kind of detailing what it is they do, what it is they can do, and in particular going to show that, that philosophy, yes, is about thinking, it's about focus, but it's also about practicality that there are some things that philosophy can and can do. Now, you have your lecture notes, either perhaps on the other side of the screen or perhaps um, um, printed off. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of work through this. I'm not going to read it verbatim, but as you'll see, it will follow in succession. So the first question is, what does philosophy mean to do? And as you see, that is what you're tasked with writing with for your first reflection paper. Now, philosophy is translated and loosely translated for the love of wisdom. Okay? The love of wisdom. What does it mean to be wise? What does it mean to think in a wise way? Okay? And typically the association of philosophy is someone that sits there like this okay? and just thinks, pontificates about the world. But ultimately, philosophy is more than just that, more than just what's often called armchair philosophy. Okay? And there are various branches of philosophy. And the first one to investigate, uh, the first one that's often seen as first philosophy, that's what Aristotle called it, is metaphysics. Now metaphysics and, and meta is loosely translated as going beyond. Going beyond the physical metaphysics. Whenever someone does something that maybe like blows your mind, you can say that's so meta, right? Because it went beyond expectations. It went beyond what it was you thought was capable. And that's what metaphysics tries to do. Metaphysics tries to explore those things that are seemingly unexplainable. Those questions that perhaps you've had with friends late at night, um, staying up, um, talking about very kind of out there concepts. Because metaphysics is concerned with the ultimate nature of reality. Not just simple physical properties that we accept and that we know about, but those things that we're still thinking about, those things that are, have yet to really fully be explained. The ultimate nature of reality. Looking at questions such as cause, substance, change, identity, a metaphysical question, for instance, is how am I, Bryce, the same person as I was 15 years ago? My physical appearance is very different. My mental capacities are very different. What I believe, how I view the world, all very different. But yet there still seems to be something that makes me who I am, Bryce. Similarly, what's caused me to be here? Right? Obviously, I'm the product of my two parents. But ultimately, can we trace that back? Is it all the way reduced to the Big Bang, to the evolutionary history that we all share? What causes me to be an individual being? Moreover, and we'll experience this with Plato, how can things stay the same but yet be in constant change? For instance... How can I, as a human, and you as a human, right? we share some sort of humanness, some sort of property, some sort of characteristics that seem to be same, that seem to be identical, but we're very, very different. So how can things stay the same, 
but yet be in constant change. That no one human is exactly alike. Thinking about time, does time exist? Or is it just a concept that we've tried to label, that we've tried to put a box on? Space? How do we understand the space between individuals, the space that's between you and I right now via our computers? That's kind of weird. All of these metaphysical speculations that try to push beyond the physical, push beyond what it is we accept as common. The next branch of philosophy is ontology, and sometimes ontology gets lumped into metaphysics because it focuses on what it means to be, what it means uh, to be something, what does it mean to be a human. And perhaps you can see kind of clearly that ontology relates pretty quickly to metaphysics. The next branch of philosophy, epistemology. Epistemology, I think, is a really fascinating field of study. Epistemology uh, investigates knowledge, the ultimate nature of knowledge. Theories of knowledge, theories of knowing. What does it mean to know? How do we know? And do we know anything at all? So again, as it says in the lecture notes, what we know, how we know it, and really, do we know anything at all? And what's interesting here is when we think about knowledge, Ultimately, what we're doing and what we're investigating is we're investigating some very wide differences. For instance, if I were to say, well, I know that God exists, or I know that God doesn't exist. Okay? Those seem to be two very provocative, very bold claims. Now, listen to how this changes. If I came to you and I said, well, hey, I know that God exists, or I know that God doesn't exist, how different of a sentence and a proclamation is it if I were to just say, well, I believe God exists, or I believe God doesn't exist? Right? There seems to be something very different happening there when I change the words between knowledge and belief. And so thinking about that and thinking about how we use the word no, because we use it all of the time, right? Well, what's happening when we say that? Do we actually know? Or are we just kind of speculating? So epistemologists are interested in the difference between knowledge, belief, understanding, and perhaps certainty. Because it, again, seems very different if I were to say, I know God exists. I believe God exists, I understand that God exists, or perhaps the most bold proclamation of all, I'm certain that God exists, or I'm certain that God doesn't exist. So epistemologists are interested in questions such as these, and they're interested in investigating the ultimate nature of knowledge. And there are two kind of branches of epistemology that we'll encounter in our next four weeks. And the first one uh, is empiricism. And you can see that there in your lecture notes. Empiricism is the study, or at least the, the, the area of epistemology that claims that all of our knowledge, all of our knowledge is derived from experience. All of our knowledge is derived from experience. That our mind is a blank slate a tabula rasa, as if to be written upon. And ultimately, when we think about that, and we think about how it is we gain knowledge, I think it's certainly true, and certainly the case, that much of our knowledge comes from what it is we experience. That seems to be a pretty easy claim to make. And the empiricist is going to hold that all of our knowledge is derived from experience. And then the next bet, next branch rather, is rationalism. And rationalism holds that some of our knowledge is derived independent of experience. Some of our knowledge is derived independent of experience, meaning that knowledge can be derived from the mind itself, from our ability to rationalize, our ability to reason. And as you can see here, the fancy word for that is called a priori. And we'll investigate that uh, further on.
So I'm going to finish this video finishing with epistemology. The next video is going to take up with the remaining branches of philosophy. So again, empiricism, the study of knowledge, what it means to know, how we know it, and do we know anything at all. And then we're going to turn to our other branches on the next video.